You know guys, I could not think of a better place to review and in a way preview the brand new Hyundai Kona than right here. Why is that? Well that's because I'm on the big island of Hawaii where of course Kona is and where Hyundai flew me out to test drive that. And we're going to take it from the beach to the top of Mauna Kea which is a almost 14,000 foot mountain volcano and see how it does in between. I'm pretty excited to be driving up to the top of the volcano. I wanted to do a review where you guys get to experience the full breadth of what this car can be used for. And let's face it, we've got all-wheel drive, we've got a turbo, which is good at high altitudes, we'll need that. We've got a locking center diff, and if there's snow up that, we'll need that as well. So we're gonna get to test this thing out, both in the sunshine and hopefully on a dirt or perhaps no covered road, all within the span of, let's say, an hour and a half to two hours. So sit back, buckle up, and let's go for a ride to the top of the volcano. Under the hood, there are two engine options. There's the entry-level two-liter that puts out 147 horsepower and is paired to a six-speed automatic or there's this one that I would highly recommend it's a 1.6 liter turbo puts out 175 horsepower and a 195 pound foot of torque and it is made it to a seven speed dual clutch it can power all four wheels and of course it's the one that puts a much bigger smile on my face because it's a lot faster there is an embargo on driving impressions until the well, almost the end of this month. So I really can't tell you how this car drives, which is okay because I can show you how it drives. And what I mean by that is, well, I've got a little bit of open stretch of road right here and I'm gonna stop and then I'm gonna give it the beans and you guys can see how long it takes to get to 60. I'll let you guys decide that. Okay, I'm floored. And there you have it, 60 miles an hour. Good gusty engine note, you heard that yourself of course. One of the things that Hyundai will tell you is that what separates this car from a lot of the competitors is that, that it has McPherson strut suspension in the rear, which is always a good thing. I mean, you want the most sophisticated suspension that you can get. Can't wait to get up there and see if in fact, we're gonna need this car's all wheel drive and locking center differential. Keep in mind that we only have about six inches of ground clearance, and while our departure angle is okay, the approach angle, not so good. <laughs> so uh, this could be uh, interesting if there was a lot of snow up there or ice. There are four different trim levels in the Kona, starting with the SC and going all the way to the top of the line ultimate which I'm in right now. The SC starts at about $20,000, this one's almost $30,000, but for your 30 k you get a lot of big boy toys including this big 8 inch display, a lot of safety tech, blind spot monitoring, autonomous braking, a lot of the kind of stuff you would expect from a car that's perhaps in the next segment up from this Hyundai. I like the layout of this car, it's very straightforward. You got your tech on the left, you got your speedo on the right, and if you look, it's saying I'm getting 12.7 now, 13.2 MPG, and that's because I just reset the odometer. Actually, I was getting about 24.3 MPG on the way over here from the other side of the island. Hyundai says that the front wheel drive version of this car will get 30 MPG, and I do have the Moroni for the car right here. This one is 29,775. 27 combined, 26 city, 29 highway, which is respectable. This subcompact crossover segment is red hot. In fact, it's increased 4% over the last year. This Kona competes with cars like the Jeep Renegade, the Mazda CX-3, and of course, the Subaru Crosstrek. Now the question is, what sets this car apart? Well, one of the things that makes it unique is the design, as I found out when I talked to the lead designer of the Kona. So 
what were you going for when you first put up big words in your studio? Yeah, well, we want to avoid those big words like <laughs> iconic and modern and sporty and things like that, you know. But uh, nothing essentially, like dreams or well, yeah, no, <laughs> mysterious utility. We try to avoid that kind of stuff. Yeah, but no, it's it's true true to the client or the customer of the vehicle. We needed something eye catching. We all knew that, so that's pretty easy to understand, right? right. So. Uh, avoiding all of those typical design terms that you can encapsulate about 10 words we just try to work on the proportion of the car from the outside perspective and make sure that this little car because it is a small what we call small CUV category um, make sure it had kind of presence and we like to talk about this sort of smaller dog if you will like a like a little bulldog that has this kind of attitude and it doesn't really care it doesn't even really recognize how small it is but regardless it has this kind of uh, you know nobody's gonna mess with me kind of thing so typical CUVs have wheels at the corners short overhangs this one coming from Hyundai's traditional front-wheel drive architecture has a bit of a longer front overhang but we decided to kind of flip that around and turn a negative into a positive from a design perspective and, and get the get the hood to read a little bit longer bring the nose out a little bit longer and then have these really iconic uh, wheel spats on the front wheels and the rear wheels wrap around as kind of a cladding uh, apparatus that housed the headlight and then for a modern touch put the DRLs up above and give that kind of uh, high-tech high -tech, uh, feeling. This subcompact segment is very popular with millennials, or at least so Hyundai tells me. It's certainly not very popular with big guys like me because I'm sitting behind myself, and yes, I do have adequate headroom and kind of adequate legroom, but I don't really fit. Now, keep in mind this car is 164 inches long, 61 inches high, and 70.9 inches wide, and that is 2.7 inches shorter than a Tucson, but Hyundai will tell you that it has class-leading space, especially in the back. Well, let me show you. This Kona is 4.3 inches shorter than a Mazda CX-3, yet it has 19.2 cubic feet of space to the Mazda's 12.4 in the back. Plus, it has 40-60 folding seats, so Hyundai will tell you you get a lot more room than you would, let's say, in a Mazda CX-3. Pretty interesting uh, cloud cover pretty soon. We're almost at 8,000 feet. We're down to 60 degrees, and I think it's going to get a lot colder, and we're climbing quickly, just heading straight uphill. And that's when uh, having a turbocharged engine certainly pays off because uh, even though the air is getting thinner, that turbo is making up the difference. Alright, so uh, hey guys, I just picked up a hitchhiker. His name is Bill. Say hi, Bill. Hi, I'm Bill. Uh, nice Bill. to meet you. Bill, where are you from? Uh, California, originally Missouri, 25 years in the Navy and uh, here revisiting Hawaii after being stationed here in the 70s. All right, well, uh, hop in, let's go. There's a car behind me. You betcha. Right down here, I've got a rental. Okay. And uh, the rental company uh, disallow this. If you break down up here, they, they uh, you know, charge you a lot of money. Yeah, I get it. get it. Yeah, and the reason they disallow it is because, look at this. See, four-wheel drive only. What's your rental? Uh, it's a, uh, from Enterprise and it's a little uh, Hyundai uh, Elantra. So we're in a Hyundai too. Is it? Ah, we're this is the new Kona. <laughs> ah, okay. And who are you reviewing for? Uh, uh, we do a thing called the Fast Lane Car. Oh, I know Fast Lane. All right, Bill, it's getting a little rough and tough actually, so I'm going to lock. The center diff, four-wheel drive lock on. Let's try it. And there are the observatories. So it looks like we've made it to the top. Let's see what my watch says. 12,600, 12,800, 12,900. We're almost at the top. There you go, guys, 13,000. 13,333. Yep. There's our snow. I wonder why all the signs have holes in them. You think that's for wind? I bet it's for wind. You think that's for wind? Yeah, I bet you that's for yep. wind too. This is exciting. Hey, 
And we are here, we summited. 13,528, it's still going, 31. It's changing as we speak. Oh, sorry, I'm doing a little video. You How closed gonna, it. How are we going to get down? Yeah. You gotta, the way you came up. <laughs> All right. Okay. But be careful because it's slippery. And I don't want you guys getting into any trouble. Going okay. Down. We'll take our time. Okay. Going we'll take our time. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. But yeah. with this snow, this light flares, it builds up on the road. It makes the road slippery. And I don't see anybody can tolerate with this slippery road. That's right. Well, I got to tell you, I'm from Colorado, so. Okay. A little snow is okay. I'm okay. used to it. Yeah, <laughs> but these roads are all like this. Yep. And I, I've been into a lot of trouble when the road is like that. All right, guys. Well, we made it to the top, almost 14,000 feet. The road is closed and it is snowing. And uh, I'm so happy that I got to take you up here along with Bill, who's behind the camera. Bill, say hi. Hello, man. He's Thank back you. there. Thank you. I'm Roman. Okay, take, care. take care, man. Thank you. Yeah, I think he's ready for us to head down. So uh, I just want to thank you very much for your help. You were great. Absolutely. You rocked it, dude. Thank I you. Hope, I'm not a cinematographer, but I hope I hope you got some good shots. No, we got some great shots. And uh, uh, as much as uh, I appreciate the ranger and his uh, looking out for our best interests, yeah. I got. I feel kind of like from Colorado. <laughs> I've got this. But yeah, right. There's not a flake that stayed on the ground. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah I've got this. Yeah, yeah. I think so. A four-wheel drive and lockable. Center differential and brand new tires. Yeah. I think we're good. Remember, come back to TFLcar.com for more news, views, and of course. My ears are popping. Yeah. Here we are in Hawaii. Here we are in Hawaii, yeah. Who would have thought? Throwing snowballs. Almost 14,000 feet off-road reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao. It's cold, Bill. Should we head down? Okay, let's uh, get down and uh, get to the beach. All right, let's go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs>